Ever more numerous and sophisticated, cyber attacks have become a major international concern. In June, the NATO Cooperative Cyber Defence Centre of Excellence held its third conference on cyber conflicts at Tallinn in Estonia. 380 IT experts and researchers exchanged views on these new threats liable to seriously damage information systems that are vital for our countries. The cyber conflict concept was the nub of discussion. Cyber conflict is essentially a very broad term that includes both cyber terrorism, cyber war and even cyber crime. We have uh, different kinds of uh, cyber conflicts but uh, in reality we are still learning from it because we are now trying to define what really is a cyber conflict. It was not by chance that the conference was held in Tallinn, Estonia. This is the home of the NATO Cooperative Cyber Defence Centre of Excellence, set up after the 2007 cyber attacks. At that time, over a few hours, internet attacks hit government sites, political parties, national media, banks and even emergency services, paralysing them. This nationwide attack was a world first. 2007, most people didn't even understand what a cyber attack could be. Uh, in 2010, November, in Lisbon, uh, NATO uh, put cyber defense at the very center of the new strategic concept. So we've seen a, a, a massive change in understanding on the part of uh, NATO and NATO allies regarding the importance of cyber uh, and I think that is far more important than anything else. In Estonia, 98% of bank transactions are electronic and 92.5% of income tax declarations are submitted directly on the internet. So Estonia needs an effective defence. And others do too, for internet attacks are multiplying. Private firms are targeted, as are public institutions. In 2010, Stuxnet, a new kind of computer virus, gained world attention by infecting 30,000 computers in Iran, including systems controlling the industrial centrifuges used for the Iranian nuclear program, in principle not connected to the internet. For scientists, Stuxnet shows we are only a step away from cyber conflict. Actually, it is the first cyber weapon in history. And uh, let me quickly define what, what I refer to as a cyber weapon. That's a software artifact that is designed to be deployed in cyber conflict to do actual damage, so to destruct systems or disrupt operations. The first thing for states is to protect their digital infrastructures from hackers. International cooperation seems essential for that. Many times uh, hackers know that the best thing to do to hide in the internet is to attack through countries with which the target has poor diplomatic relations or poor law enforcement cooperation. So if I'm an American hacker and I want to target an American bank, then I just route my attack through countries, maybe three countries, with which I know my government doesn't have good relations and I have instant anonymity on the web. And this is a real challenge. So what this means is that in the future, there has to be some kind of international efforts. I think NATO could play a great role in it because uh, individual cooperation at a global level is too much to hope for. We need to do it at a state-by-state -state level and a group of states like NATO uh, cooperating first can lead us to best practices which then can be used uh, worldwide. At the Lisbon summit in November 2010, furthermore, NATO agreed to improve its cyber defence capabilities so that it can better prevent, detect and respond to cyber attacks. From my perspective, the most important thing that NATO is doing now is a significant improvement to its cyber defence uh, through a major acquisition project which is starting very shortly and that's in the order of over 35 million euros to improve NATO's overall cyber defence capabilities. And uh, that project is scheduled to be completed by the end of 2012 and it follows from the Lisbon uh, summit declaration. The conference took place at the same time as the NATO ministerials when the Alliance adopted the new cyber defence policy and a plan of action. The purpose is to define exactly which systems NATO wishes to protect and what resources are needed to do so. This is NATO Channel reporting from Tallinn.